Hello everybody, it is Wendigoon back again with another spooky video. Halloween is quickly approaching and I want this excuse to talk about one of the best horror movies I've seen in recent years, and that is The Lighthouse. Now what I'm saying is absolutely nothing new. Everyone under the sun has talked about The Lighthouse at this point. The movie's been out for a year now and everyone has their own points to make regarding character, study, mythology, symbolism, and all that. While I could spend all this time talking about those things and what the movie means, I want to get more into the personal side of it and why I found it to be one of the most enjoyable horror experiences of the past few years, which not only applies to the lighthouse itself, but horror in general. However, I'm sure a lot of you are interested in that, so real quick, let's go through a lot of the hidden meanings within the story. Historically, the movie is a true telling of two lighthouse keepers, or wikis as they're called, who were lost on a desolate lighthouse off the coast of North America. Literally, the story can be interpreted as a man going through purgatory, which is the personal adaptation of the movie I support, as shown by some of the non-realistic things that happen throughout, which is also hearkened to at the end, in which we see Winslow being picked to death by birds, implying that the entire movie itself was his final moments or his judgment, so to speak. Symbolically, the story represents that of Greek legends Proteus and Prometheus. Proteus, who created fire, and Prometheus, who stole it from him and brought fire down to man. Thematically, the movie can be viewed as Winslow's judgment through the actions of his life, from the killing of the previous man he worked with in the lumber, or at least the not prevention of his death, he is being judged throughout the film based on his actions. He originally does wrong by murdering the seagull, and then this is stacked up to the end where he kills the lighthouse keeper and then attempts to take the fire from himself from which he is thrown down, or you could say cast out of heaven. And then finally with context, all of this is told in a New England lighthouse setting, which uses themes such as Neptune and mermaids and things such as to not only represent Greek characters, but American characters, which is all delivered through incredible acting, stunning cinematography, which creates a feeling of claustrophobia and loneliness throughout the movie, which all fits together in a package that leaves you with just enough information to work off of, but not enough to give away the whole story. And don't get me wrong, all this is incredibly interesting. I love talking about it. If you all want to see me go more in depth with those themes, then I certainly will. But like I said, those have kind of been done to death. What I want to talk about is why I enjoyed watching it so much. To give an idea of why I value the story of The Lighthouse so much, you have to know my background with horror. As a kid, my dad used to set me down and watch several cheesy sci-fi movies. Everything from Anaconda to stories of giant megalodons and things such as. However, I would say the first horror movie I watched was a very cheesy slasher film called Hallowed Ground. To put it into perspective, I was about eight years old and my family was on a vacation. My mom and sisters were out for whatever reason, so it was just my dad and me in the hotel room. He decided that since the girls were out, we could watch something scary. Me being dumb and not realizing what I was getting myself into, he said, of course, why not? I can take it. So we watched the movie, and I remember there was a few jump scares that made me jump. Uh, overall, I didn't find it that scary. It was just a guy with a bag over his head running around threatening teenagers. Standard slasher fair stuff. Looking back on it now, it is really cheesy. I remember during the movie being a little bit freaked out. Nothing too bad, just kind of a feeling of uneasiness. There was a phrase repeated throughout the movie that, looking back on it, is a really stupid motif. But characters would periodically say to each other, I'll be back in 20 minutes. What would happen is the character would then leave, get killed by the killer, and then the main character would end up being chased by it. I didn't think much of this until right before my dad left to leave, he said, I'll be back in 20 minutes. I laughed it off as he shut the door and then it hit me. And then I sat there, waiting and waiting and waiting until finally he came back. I know, kind of anticlimactic. But what the difference was, was while I was waiting there for my dad to come back, there was this unknown sense in the back of my head. Of course, logically, it's the middle of the day in a crowded hotel. I knew I'd be okay, but while he wasn't in the room, I didn't know that he would be okay. If not a crazy serial killer in a scarecrow costume, it could be anything. It could be he trip and fell on the way back, or he got lost, or some other completely random nonsensical tragedy. But again, what scared me was the fact that I didn't know. Let's jump forward a few years. 
My favorite horror movie of all time is John Carpenter's 1982 rendition of The Thing. Now I can blush about this movie forever, probably going to talk about it at some point in the future, but what made me so afraid of this movie when I watched it as a kid was again that unknown sense. For those that aren't familiar with the movie, first of all, watch it. But second of all, the main premise of the movie is that there is a creature lurking inside of an Antarctic base that takes over or assimilates people to copy them. The way this ties into the unknown is that we're never explicitly shown or told what happens to these people during assimilation. I remember watching that movie at an age I certainly shouldn't have and seeing this creature shoot these tendrils out and wrap people up or what looked like almost consume them. And I remember as a kid sitting there watching and trying to figure out the exact point that they quit being human and they turned into either a corpse or the thing or something like that. And I never could. And the horror that hit me in that movie was that unknown, that gap in time from this is a person to this is definitely not a person and what it would feel like to go through that and what the horror was surrounding it. And that feeling is what I've been trying to chase in horror every movie I watch after it. Now, as I've gotten older, I've recognized some things as either standards in the genre or just don't scare me anymore. For example, when I watch the thing now, it is absolutely awesome seeing the practical effects in play, although I'm not as scared of it as I used to be. It's been said by people much more qualified than me, but it's absolutely true that as a child, horror is more so thoughts and images, and as you're older, it's thoughts and ideas. However, what I find so interesting is that those fears of the unknown don't go away, they just translate into new things. A perfect example of this are new films from Ari Aster. So far, he has Midsummer and Hereditary under his belt, and it's very obvious that he understands this fear of the unknown concept. Well, at the end of the movie, a lot of it is explained. What I like on first viewing is this uneasiness of what's going on. In Hereditary, for example, which is my personal favorite of the two, we don't know the intentions of the people around the family or what's even going to happen to the family in the end. All that we see is these incredibly graphic images and the idea that something is horribly awry and the movie expounds on that. A lot of old horror movies used to work this way, but the tradition's been kind of lost, sadly. This principle of the unknown usually only works in a first-person perspective because we are just led to know the lack of in the same way that the lead character is, which is why, oddly enough, found footage is a good genre for this type of thing. Uh, recent gems I found have been that of the Hell House movie trilogy and the VHS movies. Both create a good balance of unknown horror through its use of limiting us to the character's perspective or more specifically the camera's perspective. It is much much harder to elicit a feeling of the unknown from a third person or omnipotent perspective however good directors can manage it. And one of those directors is Robert Edgers and one of those movies is The Lighthouse. I don't want to discredit the ideas others have because I'm also super into it and I think it's another amazing aspect of the story, but I think people get too caught up in the direct one-to-one -one literal translation of movies like this when what matters more is the feelings elicited. Think of it this way. All the stuff I said in the beginning about themes and symbolism is awesome, but what matters more is the feeling you got the first time you watched the movie. Everything after that is great. It certainly helps with digestion and figuring out what you saw, but it doesn't matter the way the horror hit you the first time you watched it. What I love about The Lighthouse is the director knows exactly how to give you just enough. There is enough tones and overtones to keep you interested on the base level with the story of these two wikis and what's happening among them, but there's definitely subtext that you don't quite pick up on all the way, but you know it's there. It creates this feeling of unease and misbalance that is so rarely seen in movies today and there needs to be more of. What's amazing to me about The Lighthouse is ideas you had on first viewing should absolutely in no way be discredited afterwards because those feelings are just as legitimate as any other interpretation. Robert Edgers knew how to leave the perfect amount of room to where no one's counted out. If true horror is really subjective, then the true meaning of The Lighthouse, as it is true horror, should also be considered subjective. 
The director himself has even said this, and the movie very much so follows the dead artist theory, that once a piece of art is put out, it is the people's to interpret and figure out, and their interpretation of it is just as meaningful as the original, which in this case, the director didn't exactly have a clear plot line for it, and that's kind of the point. The reason if you look up something like Lighthouse Analysis or Lighthouse Explain, you'll get 500 videos with 500 different opinions is because you can look at this movie from 500 different ways. Different things can be gleaned from what's literal and what's not, or what this character symbolizes and this one doesn't, what real historical thing this is based off of, and blah, 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 blah. It is a testament to how good the movie is that the most important thing about it was your first watch of it. There's this constant sense of misdirection or that things are going on behind the scenes that you don't know about. And this is excellent. It's exactly what this uncomfortable, unnerving sense is supposed to be. It is a perfect narrative and psychological demonstration of the fear of the unknown. Movies like The Lighthouse take me back to that feeling I had when I was a little kid alone in the hotel room. Watching it for the first time gave me this entire sense that something was wrong and what was wrong is that I didn't know what was wrong. Every element of the movie, from the color scheme to the setting to the characters to even the boxed-in ratio of the screen itself, elicit this feeling of trapment. And while you're trapped in there with it, every plot point does exactly what it's supposed to, every line does exactly what it's supposed to, and every scare does exactly what it's supposed to. And all the scares in the movie come from yourself. What's incredibly interesting to me is the ending of The Lighthouse. It's as if watching that final scene of him falling down the staircase and then being pecked to death by birds on the beach is finding the last piece of a jigsaw puzzle but not knowing where it goes. And in the end, that is the best thing that horror can be. It is all of the pieces laid out and you know there's a picture there but you're not sure how it goes together. Some stories ruin this by not giving you all the pieces and leaving people to fend for themselves and others just give you the whole made jigsaw puzzle, but that's not near as fun and doesn't leave much to the imagination. That's another thing that's too often forgotten in horror. The imagination is where the worst ideas come from and it cannot be discredited. When I was a kid, one of my favorite things to play with was Legos. However, it wasn't playing with them after they were built, it was the building that I found so fun. Good horror, or horror done right, should be like a Lego set. All the pieces are rolled out in front of you and at the beginning, you're not sure what happens, and it creates a sense of panic and confusion. But as you start to put it together, the satisfaction of it both relieves you, but in the case of really good horror movies like The Lighthouse, leads you to new terrors. There's a short story I recently read called Heat, which without giving too much away, because I suggest you read it for yourself, is about the murder of two twin children. What's interesting is the murder is never specifically stated. We know who did it, and probably how it happened, but we're not sure. However, after the story's over, if you think back to details mentioned about the children and their caskets and things such as, you can put together the pieces yourself and figure out exactly how they were murdered and in what manner. And that is the best form of horror that can possibly be done. It's like the true terror of the story is the lake. And while you start off walking on the ice, once you realize you're on ice, and look down, scrape away the snow, and see what's there, it's all the more terrifying because you looked yourself. It was not spoon-fed, it was not delivered, it was not given in a lazy way. Because of your actions, you now know what the true terror is. Which, as mentioned before, both leads to satisfaction and shock. The lighthouse is the visual form of this. As you put the Legos together and realize that all of these pieces are part of a grander story, that you didn't see at first, but are starting to see now, you in your own time realize you're still just that little kid alone in a hotel room. Thank you all so much for watching. It really does mean a lot. Uh, for those of you that may not know on YouTube, uh, I'm also on Instagram under the same name, only the O's or zeros, and I do short stories of horror and just retrospective in different types. I also have a Patreon, which a tier is as little as $5 a month, where I have access to private Discord, as well as a monthly short story that I put out uh, that hopefully people like. To all of you that support me, either through just watching, commenting, and liking videos, or on Patreon, 
thank you. Uh, it means the world, really. A special thank you to the patrons of Huntsman Tier and Above. Thank you, Eddie Shoemaker. Thank you, Kayla. Thank you, Pef. Thank you, Benjamin Allen. Thank you, Tim Freelove. And since it's our first time, uh, thank you, Benjamin Konikoff. Even though it's technically not Huntsman level, just thank you everyone who's a patron right now. Link for it will be in the description if you're interested in helping me. But just for watching the video, thank you. I will talk to you guys later. There will be more spooky content this month. And as always, once again, thanks for watching. Bye.